You know, um, I'm a journalist, I'm not an academic, so uh, tell me when to stop. Uh, <laughs> journalists that just take the time, so uh, somebody will raise the hand when it's my job. My okay. <laughs> when my time is over. Um, Islam and democracy possibility, that's the headline. And you know, we are a flat journalist. I can say yes or no and go home. But uh, you know, uh, even after those 25 minutes, I, I don't think we will have the answer because it's very complicated uh, uh, issues, uh, very uh, uh, complicated values. Um, we are inside of discussion between those two in the Middle East, in what happened today in the Arab Spring, what people call, or the journalistic language called Arab Spring. And um, maybe even in Europe, we can have indication um, what's going to be between the Islam and the, and the democratic dream of the West. First, before, I just want to, just to say that uh, sometimes, and of course, everything that I will tell here, and will say here, it will be from my journalistic point of view. Um, I have a master's degree in, from the Hebrew University, but, but this is for my mother saloon that she will <laughs> hang it. When I, when I went to the journalistic world, my father told me, oh, you're not going to be a doctor. So uh, it's a half proud, uh, let's say. But uh, today, the Jewish mother dream, it's uh, not any longer a doctor. It's uh, to be a journalist, a famous one. So uh, I think, I hope my mom is uh, satisfied. If you check the Channel 10 rating, we're not so, <laughs> we're not so high, but uh, it's OK. So this is my point of view from 20 years of covering the Arab world, especially the Palestinian uh, territories. I lived in Hebron. I lived in Jenin as an as a, a, a Arabic Jew or sometimes as a Muslim Jew uh, or Muslim uh, Arabic uh, uh, undercover, uh, like the series I did in Europe. Uh, I didn't introduce myself as a um, Jewish, just in an Arabic. Uh, so my way to all those organizations, people, uh, uh, groups, very easy. It's not uh, like you sit uh, far from the, uh, the situation and far from the events. And first rule in the Middle East, it's you have to understand that sometimes when you see things from the West and things are happening in the Middle East or in the East, they look different. Sometimes when you see the people demonstrating and you see it in Europe and you, in the United States, you said, hey, it, it's, it's towards democracy. Maybe it's democracy. But when you live in the Middle East, you see that the picture is more complicated. Maybe there is another colors inside. And we have to take in this, this uh, uh, element into consider that things are changing between the continents. Things are changing between East and West. Sometimes we uh, used to think in another, in, in way of rational, uh, um, I call it Western rational. I sat with Arafat at uh, 2002 in the Mukata. I asked him, do we share the same rational? He said, no. I said to him, give me an example. He said, when somebody knock on the door, what are you doing? I said, I'm going towards the door to open. He, say, he said, I'm jumping from the window. I said, OK, I understand your rationale. Next time, I will wait you down <laughs> the floor under the window. He said, next time, it's something else. Next time, I don't know when it's going to be. So we have a, a, a different timeline and sometimes different rationale. When Israel attacked, uh, and then the Palestinians attacked Israel in, uh, in 2008, what we called the Oferet Yetzuka, I don't know how you call it, called in there. Uh, maybe you, Professor. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> we, the Israelis said, Khaled Mash'al, the head of the Hamas, he's sitting in Damascus. When he will hear that there is thousands of people who killed, and there is 22,000 of buildings that the Israeli uh, 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 aircraft demolished, he will, said, he will say, stop. He didn't say that. When Assad began to shoot towards demonstrators in the street, people said, after 20,000, like his father, he will stop. We're after 100,000. 
There's a not, this is a other rational. We can't understand it. We just can understand that we are not understanding in our rules, in our uh, 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 way of thinking. Take it into consider. Sometimes, I, I remember I sat with Arafat again. You know, he was jailed in the Mokata, so he had, he had a lot of time for journalists. <laughs> I asked him, you know, Pr uh, uh, Prime Minister Barack offered you 99% from the area. Why you said no? He said 99% when you ask for 100, 99% it's close to zero, not to 100. I said no, mathematically it's not so true. 99% it's very close to 100. No, 99% close to zero because it's not 100. Take it to consider. Another thing when we talk about democracy, it's about the term, democracy. Most of the world using this term, democracy. If you will ask Arab leaders, oh, who used to be leaders before the Arab Spring, uh, do you practice democracy in your country? They will say, yes, I have the democracy. We have an uh, election, we have ballots, we have uh, notes, we have prob uh, everything. But when you take the Western package of democracy and you see if it exists in countries in the Middle East, you see that there is a difference. They use the term democracy, but it's not Western democracy. Gaddafi once used to say, we invented the democracy. Democracy, he said in Arabic, demo, it's uh, people. Karasi in Arabic, it's uh, <laughs> chairs which means it's uh, the people sitting on the chairs, he said. It's our invention. <laughs> Democracy, he said. He was in, in uh, by the way, it was in the, uh, in the University of, Co in Columbia University, in, in I see he was, he was the first hour able to, to, to go there. But even you, if you will ask, when, when uh, uh, Assad, Bashar Assad, President Bashar Assad uh, of Syria, when he, uh, um, when his father died and he came to Syria, he explained, in a very uh, uh, um, um, logic uh, interview, why he uh, uh, practiced democracy in his country, although his father told him, come, take the, take the country. They said that this is democracy, but sometimes they me the meaning it's something else. Once Arafat, and that's the last example of Arafat, I didn't <laughs> imagine that I will use him. You know, journalists write something and then he said, he's saying something else. He said, democracy, it's like sugar. When I ask him, why are you not taking Hamas into the game, to the democratic game? Only Abu Mazen told to Hamas, come, do, we will do an election. Arafat told him, no, I can give you 10% from uh, the PLO, but not an election. I asked him why. He said, it's like a sugar in a tea. When you put more, you can drink the tea. So slowly, 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 slowly with this sugar. It's sugar, it's sweet, but you can't have it in one dose or in a big dose or an overdose. Okay, Arab Spring. We are having, we were seeing such a amazing things around us. And the first question is, is this the beginning of democracy all over the Middle East? Each one of us will say yes, maybe he's right. And no, again, we're right. I will take the no and then the yes. Why it's not a democracy? Because the Middle East, in his uh, structure, in his inner structure in the societies, divided between ethnic groups, sometimes between different ethnic groups, Shia and Sunnah, and this is the main conflict and the main things, the main bleeding conflict today, Shia and Sunnah. No, those who killed in Syria, those who killed in Iraq, those who killed in Yemen, they are not, the, the Assad didn't kill them because they, they, they asked for democracy. He killed them because they came to revenge what his father did and what his, you know, the first father did to Prophet uh, Muhammad. Shia and Sunnah, it's in conflict from the 7th 
century that continue up to day, up to day. So we can't ignore it. That's why sometimes minorities, most of them, sometimes majorities in the Middle East asking for democracy. If you will ask Hassan Nasrallah, the head of Hezbollah, what you want to be in Lebanon? He will say democracy. Why? Because democracy serve his dream. Sometimes they asking for democracy because it's serve your dream. This is the tool to implement your dream. The Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt waited 80 years for the moment that it will be free election. And then when it was, the question, the, we didn't, we wasn't so surprised. Even in the West, in, in Gaza, when you opened freely the, 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 the ballot box and you do a free election, you see that the picture are changing. So most of the time, Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt, even in Jordan, even in Syria, they will ask for democracy. Because they believe in the value, yes. But the, the, the tension between those values, Islam and democracy, it's unfair game. Islam is above democracy for those people. It's above, not because they hate democracy, not because democracy is uh, what used to say, uh, what we used to uh, uh, define in Arabic, bid'ah. Um, <laughs> Unwelcome uh, innovation. I, unwelcome innovation, yeah, sorry. You know, I'm, I'm thinking in Arabic, Hebrew, English, so I, I'm <laughs> translating three times in my head. Because the first value is Islam. Afterwards, how I can implement it? Democracy, okay, I will go for it. That's why I think that the democracy that we see in some places in the Middle East, maybe it's one-way democracy. We have to wait to see if they will give the key. When Abu Mazen did the election in, 19, in 2006, when Hamas won in the West Bank and in Gaza, Abu Mazen refused to give the key of the, of the, of the state. And then Hamas took it by force. We have two states today. We have Hamastan and we have the Fatahland. And if United States and Israel are not keeping Abu Mazen to control there, it's going to be like in Gaza in the West Bank, because it's no longer a democracy game. When Hamas, say, when Hamas realized that Abu Mazen are not going to respect democracy, they said, OK, plan B. And it's the same with all the areas. Sometimes the democracy is only uh, a tool toward the goal. You know that in Bahrain, we have for two years Arab Spring, the beautiful Arab Spring. But Saudi Arabia and the United States are keeping those demonstrations silent. Even Saudi Arabia, they thought to take over Bahrain. They, they got a bridge between them just to keep those 20% Sunni family to be on power and not to give democracy to 70% Shi'is. Why, why the United States are not giving democracy for those uh, 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 people? They 70% from Bahrain because it will change all, all the map. Bahrain is the head of, of the Western, American, Saudi, Israeli uh, uh, um, um, map or existence in the, in, the, in, the goal, in the Persian Gulf. Who is going to give it? Small, tiny island with the beautiful shells, by the way. I dived there. But nobody give it in the name of democracy. Democracy, it's not allowed in this place because, you know, there, there is something above. What's above? That the Sunnah should be prevail and be on power. Same in Saudi Arabia. 
It's nice to, to, have, to, get, to, to let the women go to the parliament. It's nice to have democratic game, but with a limit. How this limit, it says, the, the leader says, when from that limit it will rescue my regime, that's it. I was said no. Look what happened in Egypt in 2000, 2005, when, the, when President Mubarak opened a bit the election, 88 members from the Muslim Brotherhood entered to the parliament. Four years after, only one of them entered. Weird. What about those 80 percent? How they, they, just, they just have one member and, and a representative in, in, in the parliament? This is a game. This is a game. So take into consider that before you ask yourself if there is a democracy or not, put the right glasses on the Middle East map. Sunnah and Shia. When I said first time in the television before six years to Moti Kirshenbaum, Sunnah and Shia, he said, oh, you, the expert, telling us about tribes. Leave those stories. It's not tribes, my friend. This is not a tribes. When Saddam Hussein fought Iran for eight years, by the way, this is the most horrible war ever since the World War, uh, Second World War in the Middle East, Iran, Iraq. One million and a half people killed in this war. Why? Because of the Sunnah Sun and the Shia. Because Iraq and, and the Persians. What we see in Iraq today, by the way, this month we see rising up of all, all those uh, uh, terror attacks. What we see in Syria, what we saw in Lebanon, it's only because of this division. Societies that are not dealing with this conflict, like Egypt and Tunisia, maybe, maybe they will have easier way towards democracy, maybe. Egypt was from 5,000 years back, a politically and geographically unit that you can say, OK, maybe. And Tunisia, maybe. But I can't, say, I can't say that that's it, this is democracy. We are now in the time of the reaction, after the action. The balancing going to be in the future. Why not? And why yes? Sometimes the Muslim Brotherhood, the Wasatiya, what we call, the mainstream of Islam, says that the, that the uh, 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 elements of democracy are existent in the Islam. Ta'adudiyya. The um, multiple uh, uh, numbers of of, uh, 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 of groups and uh, and people who want to share in the regimes it exists. The shura, they conceal, it, when you're consulting cons consulting with someone about the regime, a oh, small group exists, but it's far away. It's far away from adapting the Western democracy. That's why we don't have any. Western democracy yet. We have small steps toward. I think that the Wasatiya, the Muslim Brotherhood, using as a tool. And the Salafis, they are more uh, dugri, what you say in Arabic. They are more straight. They said, leave it. Leave, leave them in democracy. It's not our way of ruling. In a few minutes, uh, how much time I have? Uh, Ten minutes. Okay. okay. We'll give you a little bit more. I, I, will sh I will show you something that I heard in Europe. What people, young people, in democracy societies think about democracy. Which means if, if uh, for example, if we're jumping now, small, small tiny jump to <laughs> Europe, we see kids children of, of immigrants, maybe children of children of immigrants, Muslim immigrants in Europe, they lived in democratic society for all their life. They, ju they just, just heard stories from their parents and grandmother and grandfather what happened and what kind of life they, they, they had in, in the Middle East. What they dream? Is the democracy are in their DNA, what we used to say? I'm not sure. 
I'm not sure. Why? Because there is no observation of the democracy as a value inside Islam 100%. There is dialogue between them. That's why we have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of yes element, why democracy and Islam can go together. But there is a lot of no elements. When it's no, when it's come to contradiction, when it's come to the point that democracy said the opposite from the Islamic value or the Islamic rule. That's the point that we have to examine things in the Middle East. Um, you know, uh, once I gave uh, uh, an election in uh, Mohon Weizmann, in Weizmann uh, Institute, and uh, they told me to talk about the Arab Spring with, uh, if it is, an Arab Spring. And another professor came with the same headline, Arab Spring. And I asked, uh, guys, did you, uh, did you bring here another uh, expert? And you didn't tell me, which means we didn't tell me. It's my respect and journalist. As a journalist, they said, he's a climate. He's a doctor for climate, and he invested, <laughs> investigated that there is no spring in the Middle East. <laughs> we are not a, we're not a Europe. You know, in Europe, when you finish the winter, you have three months of spring and then summer. Here in Israel, you have one week. Or in the Middle East, sometimes you don't have any spring. So guys, there is no spring. There is no spring. Spring you have in the spring. <laughs> Not here. You can call it uh, winter, you can call it whatever you want. I'm call, I call it in, the, in Channel 10 most of the time, time to revenge has come. That's it. After 80 years, the Muslim Brotherhood waited for the point that they can take revenge from those nationalists who took the, 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 the power from them or whatever you will call it. That's it. It's not because of the Facebook and not because of, uh, of the iPhone. The iPhone and the Facebook and the YouTube helping them to do it now. When you wait 40 years or 30 years in Syria, it's only one moment or two moments in the Middle East timeline. You know, shwai shwai in Arabic, sabr, patient. This is another value that you have to understand. Things are going slowly in the Middle East. There is a joke that when a guy takes revenge after four years, he said, I was hurry. Nothing is, is pushing. So this is the time of the revenge. If democracy will go out of it, maybe, maybe, but not, not now, because now, it's a picture of ethnic and, and, and uh, ethnic uh, 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 division, clans, traditional divisions. I can tell you a lot about the difference between the Alawis and the Shi'is and the Sunnis, but it won't help us to understand why there is such a bloodshed there. Because we'll, we'll never understand it, but we have to see the numbers, the numbers Hundreds of thousands are, are dying in the last years in the Middle East. Gaddafi, 60,000. Assad, 100,000. Yemen, Iraq, thousands of people. Why? Why they've been killed? Because they, they ask for democracy? No. Because in the seventh century, his, uh, their father, the patri father, choose to go always Sunnah, always Shia. This is the, the, the reason. And that's why the democracy came today and acting as a tool in this game. I will end my, uh, my uh, speech. I don't, want to, I don't know what is it, but uh, presentation. yeah, presentation. I want to show you two guys I met in Europe. Two minutes clip, each one of them. One of them from Belgium. Abu Imran, maybe you, you know him, and one of them from Britain. By the way, you mentioned, uh, uh, the president mentioned 
um, what happened in, in United in, in the United Kingdom when they uh, slaughtered the the soldier. These guys that you're gonna see, he was the leader of of those two guys who did who did it. When they live in in, in democratic society, they can say free what they think. Once a Palestinian friend told me a phrase in Arabic. It says, You want the truth or his brother? Choose. There is a truth, there is his brother. You have to see as a journalist where is the truth, where is the brother. And sometimes I'm telling you, when you have a free societies, it's, it's most likely to hear the truth there. Not in in, in uh, dictatorial state like like Syria. So those guys sitting in Europe, f the 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 first it's Abu Imran. It's an organization called Sharia for Belgium. This is part of my serious Allah Islam that I did in Europe, and I'm discussing here what is more important for you, the state rules or the Quranic rule. Those guys are Salafis. He's, um, now he's arrested <clears throat> because he sent guys to Syria. But I entered his organization as a Muslim. I stayed with, their, with them weeks. Only two minutes you can hear what he's thinking and what his guys are thinking. Here it's within uh, English subtitles. Allah is the legislator. Allah makes the laws. He is the one who tells us what's allowed and what's forbidden. This is the atonement. האטומיום הוא מונומנט ענק ובתשעה כדורי פלדה מחוברים ומסמלים את מחוזותיה של בלגיה. We were in Brussels, yeah. and we were on our way home, but we saw, the, we saw some cars going into the king, the, I mean, the palace of the king. Uh -huh. So Abu Ahmad told us to make a video in front of the, in front of the palace <laughs> to provoke it. The reason why we pray on street is because Abu Bakr is one of our followers. What's he doing? Yes. He always prays in front of his door. He never prays in his house. Why? So he can, so he provocated the Quraysh, so he can make them mad. And that's why we pray on the street. It's like kind of da'wah. The kufar. Okay. I won't jump because not to take more uh, time. When they walk by. Look what the dreams of those, those kids. Allah is present and in Europe. This is the guy, the Britain guy. A group of lies. And the clearly, the evidence is very clear that this were works in, in the hands of extremists. In the Arab world, or in the Arab world, Muslim in general, today, more countries are closer to your country. This is the moral. Yemen, Yemen, Abyssin, these regions. Hadramaut, là-bas c'est maintenant en 100% contrôle des musulmans. Les gens sont là-bas en sécurité. Jazmin Pakistan, comme un pays, Jazmin Pakistan. Nord Waziristan, ouais. Oui, mais où, mais où, où est-ce que vous êtes comme le, le, le Cheikh, Cheikh Oussama. Cheikh Oussama, rahimullah. Ahsan, شخص في هذا الزمن. Rahimullah. يعني أنا كموجب بحال أبو الشيخ أسامة جبال دوا كيج كيج في مال 
Je suis, euh, je suis la saleté en tous les ongles. Je n'ai pas le droit de parler cher comme ça. Je m'en ai pas et là, je suis un peu plus de temps. Je suis un peu plus de temps. On était très bien sur le farah. Je suis un peu plus de temps. 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 Je suis un חברי השנה פור בלג'ים לא לבד, ישנם ארגונים נוספים פעילים בבירות אירופה השונות. המטה הכללי יושב בלונדון, ובראשו עומד השייח אנג'ם חודר. They're not meaning democracy. When they say Sharia, they, they see it as a Bin Laden style. This is the dream of part of the kids in Europe, my friends. They live in democracy. But when the democracy are not serving their dreams, the Islam come above. So each one of us will decide if it's possible or not. But there is a time, maybe it will be possible that Islam will prevail with democracy in a Western package 100%. Maybe there are going to be changes. Maybe it's not going to be at all. But this is the argument of yes or no from a journalistic point of view. From my experience, you will decide by yourself what you are uh, picking from this. But this is my things. Thank you very much.